Hey everyone, it's Bameworth, and here I am again to talk to all the points because I neglected two in the last episode. And this time we've got Unshine and Stratosphere to greet us in the lobby. And Unshine notices Siam's symbol and lets you keep it as a battle trophy. Heh, <laughs> guess he respected his adversary after all. And Stratosphere is understandably paranoid after being locked away in the basement for three centuries. But yeah, this time around, the points are either thanking you for your heroic efforts or wondering what the story has in store for them next. And Shala are still glossing over the dubious honor of being the first point in the game that you challenge. But yeah, jokes aside, it's kind of heartwarming in a way. In fact, I think I remember Signal's post-game dialogue here. Yeah, yeah, he's happy to see you're still here. That's sweet. Yeah, honestly, just being in the Star Emporium makes me so happy. And Compeo, pondering as usual, still a bit bummed that he doesn't remember shit. But yeah, just being in this hub world is just super nostalgic to me. Probably because I remember playing this game in the dev period, when Battery Canyon was completely empty and Distortion Paradise didn't even exist. And Pluck here? He's happy that things are just okay now. Yeah. Pluck is a very simple point, with simple desires. He likes wood, and that is all. Eulips, meanwhile, still sitting in the corner. Yeah, she's had quite the character arc. Uh, this time, however, we have not talked to the remaining three points. Yeah, I was just that eager to get things over and done with. So, Arolin, after the nightmare that was the previous episode, doesn't want to get involved anymore. Can't say I blame her. I think it's a her. And Mino justifying why the door on the right takes you back to the beginning of World 10. And Ixel still getting over his massive freakout. So yeah, that's everyone now, and now I just gotta do my practice run. And my actual run will begin... now. Welcome back everyone. Well, we've finally gotten Shattered Shardscape out of our hands, and now we're on to the post-game world. Ascension in five parts. So without further ado, let's go in. And here we have a new symbol named Yogurt, I mean Yogate. And when you've already won, you can access it again by just talking to him. And he has his own test screens too. Anyway, this first part is all about jumping across high velocity platforms. It's not too bad once you get it down, but there are a couple parts you need to watch out for. Oh yeah, for whatever reason, your character moves really slowly in this bit, so your steering control is limited. Okay, and whoop. Yeah, it's gonna get way worse than that. I right, end this bit, let go of W and hold D, just so you can get across smoothly. And there we go, that's the first half done. Second is much harder, as you can expect. And we don't have to talk to anyone either. Not until the end, anyway. Okay, this bit, just stay in the center. And this jump coming up, you gotta time it well. Whoop. There we go. And these next couple bits are easy. It's the bit at the end that's the hardest. And this bit, yeah, just jump over the gap. It's not that difficult to do. All right, here we go. Jump, jump, and jump. Whoop. And there we go. Yeah, I got stuck at that bit in my practice run, but now that I've got it down, it's not that big a deal. What is a big deal, though, is the second part. Stratosphere's part is actually pretty tough, much like it was in the original. Like this bit here, you have to jump over a couple of dry noodles for whatever reason. Oop, not too bad, it's the other two where it gets a bit hairy. Um, okay, go. And there we go, that's that's just the first tricky bit. Is it right? Yeah, it's right. Oh, yeah, yeah, watch out for that. I've never done it before for some reason. Also waiting a bit, yeah, because this dash pepper is very generous on time. Sorry, Stratosphere, I'm only here to wait it out. Again, no speed run. And this bit is actually damn hard. Okay, there we go. It's the jump onto the pole ahead that's been giving me trouble. Okay, oh, got it. And this bit I also remember from the original, minus the noodle. Oh, there we go, and just this one. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, this, this bit's a lot harder than I remember. If this were Stratosphere's challenge course, it would definitely rank up as one of the harder ones. All right, one more. Oh, God, I hate these jumps. And yeah, it's basically it. Just a, a couple relatively easy jumps and this bit, and we're there. Yeah, the difficulty of this part is much more befitting of Stratosphere. He kind of got done dirty in the Celestial battle. Unintentionally, but still. Of course, we move from the hardest part to the easiest. 
Yeah, the Mega Breather has a Mega Breather within it. This area is just a series of puzzles and nothing else. And it's pretty, it's pretty easy to figure out, too. Just look at the structures ahead of you, not the ones you're at. Oh, they can be a bit annoying, though. But yeah, this bit is the easiest level in the game. I'm not kidding, you literally can't die in this room. Unless maybe you get frustrated and hit the reset button. But if you made it this far, how can you possibly fail? In fact, it's kind of like the Casino Night Zone of this game. A level that is way easier than the first whoop, but it, it's just fun to go through. Man, I miss Ace Spark in his perfect runs. I hope he's still doing well after his numerous health issues. But yeah, overall, this is less threatening than any other level in the whole game. Even the easiest mission in Adventure Grounds threw something deadly at you. So yeah, that's that bit done, and the next bit, we're gonna flip things around and do this in reverse. The fourth part is like the third, but it actually has danger in it. And you're gonna see why in just a moment. You see, now we're looking back, otherwise the same thing as before. But now we have gaps to get across, using these bridge pieces. Yeah, the first two are no big deal at all. Yeah, see, you don't even need to jump like I did. And, uh, 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 okay, there we go. Yeah, sometimes it can be a bit hard to read, but overall there's very little actual danger, as long as you know what you're doing. Yeah, you can see the gap there, and I just feel like jumping for some reason. Now here's where it gets a little bit trickier. For this bridge, you have to be in the center so you don't have to worry about jumping. And you see that? Yeah. Yeah, I hated that when I first played, but really, it's just these steps that are annoying. Ah, you see? It's surprisingly easy to misjudge. Ah, damn it. Yeah. But yeah, once you get to those platforms, all you have to do is just change the camera. Like this. Yeah, see, I've, I've more or less got them memorized by now. It's no big deal anymore. They're not even that hard to judge. But the difficulty then goes back up for the last part. This bit is all about being able to read the paths with what little visuals you're given. And this one here is a bit tricky. Uh, yep, yeah, it's, it's basically only one path from Epic Minigames. And this one I had trouble with reading the platforms. You just gotta look closely. And, and there we go. And this one we have circles now. Yeah, you see, we have to avoid the black spinners. Whoop. And there we go. It's pretty generous on time. And this one's the hardest. Uh, okay, go. And jump. Okay, wait, wait. And there we go. Yeah, it's a bit like down the polar axis. You gotta keep track of the platforms. And this one has gaps, but they're small enough that you can easily walk over them. Yeah, see, like that. Just as long as you're straight enough. Whoop. And there we go. That is the level done. But we still have one last battle ahead of us. The battle against Voixer. Voixer? Man, some of these names are hard to pronounce. Anyway, we have the post-game boss against Voixer. And we can see the other parts too. So strap yourselves in, boys and girls. This is the true finale. The boss fight against Voixer and his unknown form. Let the true final battle begin! Voixer, you okay, buddy? You look like you're having problems. Yeah, it turns out you don't actually fight Voixer because he ends up having an existential crisis. Yeah, you better be sorry, a piece of nothingness. You really had everyone going there. Still, that's it for the post-game world. That wasn't so hard. And now comes the hard part. Hope I'm ready. Whoop. Whoop. Whoa, oh, Nelly. Oh, God. Ah, damn it. Messed that one up. Well, we're off to a good start, aren't we? Whoop. There we go. And now we got this jump, also from Shadow in the Skies. Whoop. Ah, oh, really? That's clearly not how you do it. Ugh. What are you looking at? Okay, grab it now. And the hard stuff begins up ahead, past Stratosphere. And oh god, what am I- ah, That was stupid. What was that I said about no speed running? But now we have to jump over two of them. A bit tricky. Whoop. And we we'll, ah, Why did I think that would work? This course is a lot harder than I remember. Stratosphere finally giving it his all. And now this jump onto the pole is quite tough. Uh, uh, ah, yeah, you see? It's quite finicky. Stratosphere ain't fooling around. Especially not after his last display. 
Now the truly hard stuff begins. Going across the roller and onto the cracked symbol. Ah, oh, seriously? One time I wish I didn't mouse lock. That isn't Effie 2. And now we've got the spinning triangles. Oh, fuck. God damn it. Well, there goes beating this in five attempts. God, that was such a stupid death. And now it's gonna take even longer. Yeah, I think you get the idea by now. From my own memory alone, there was little doubt this wouldn't put up any resistance compared to those other two nightmares. That doesn't mean it can't mess you up, though. Yawgate stage isn't too bad for the most part. Once you know the right approach to everything and how your character controls on the pads, you shouldn't have too much trouble. But there are some parts that are a bit tricky to execute, especially the ending where you have to time your jumps just right or you'll fall through the gaps. Stratosphere stage is easily the hardest part of this world. It's the most varied stage obstacle-wise, as it's a shorter and easier version of Shadows in the Skies from the original game, which itself was a damn hard level. The killer noodles on the orbiting red shards can get you easily if you're not prepared, but it's the stuff behind Stratosphere himself that will give you the most trouble. The rollers combined with their death bricks make the jump so much harder, and the ones on and off of the spinning symbol definitely don't help. But when that's done, we move from the hardest stage to the easiest. Forward stage? You literally can't die outside of pressing reset. What else can I say about this in regards to perfect running? This stage is just a fun series of puzzles and nothing else. So because of that, just like my original playthrough, Moward Stage is getting my first and only difficulty rating of zero. Passless's stage, on the other hand, does have one part at the end where you need to be careful. Those two platforms all but require you to change the camera so you can judge their positions more easily. But once you've got it, the jumps themselves are very lenient and the other gaps are as easy as walking through the centers of the bridge pieces. So this is only getting a higher rating than Mord's stage just because of the ending. Thankfully, Voixer's stage is where the difficulty rises back up. The challenge here is being able to read the pathways and get through them with what little you can see. The platforms in the third one are surprisingly easy to overshoot if you don't know the best camera angle. The circular ones also have the spinners to avoid, and the triangles move pretty fast. But overall, most of your deaths here will be from misjudging the movement you must make, since of course, 90% of the time, you can't actually see the path. And the battle against Voixer? Um... What battle? All in all, the difficulty of this world is quite all over the place, and none of it goes anywhere near some of the stuff from the previous two worlds. Probably for the best, though, since I definitely needed a huge breather from those two hellholes. And thus concludes the main storyline for this game. But there's still a fair amount of stars to collect, and there's only one place to get them. Now, do I really want to walk all the way back there when the bonus levels are there? Nah, fuck it. I'll do it just for consistency's sake. And here we are. So you're probably wondering what that thing in the room behind Yawgate was? Well, you're about to see now. It's Celestial Symbol. And we even get to talk to his spirit as well. Just be sure to stop just short of the symbol. And yeah, I'm gonna speed through it, but in a nutshell, he assumes that the Voixer battle played out wonderfully. Like the Roblox admins and the events, they just can't comprehend bad reviews. So anyway, that is the final symbol and the end of the story. Also, is there somebody over there I should talk to later on? Nah, who cares? And good news for us, we have this. There we go, nice little shortcut. So now it's story mode done. Ah, shit, my walk speed is slow now. But anyway, now that the main story is done, all we have now are the bonus levels. But before we do that, let's have a little chat with... Nain? Or... Nain? Nain? Yeah, let's go with that. So, let's chat with Nain. I don't seem to recall this dialogue, but from what I can gather, he's one of those rare celestial defenders. But he holds nothing against us. So now with that out of the way, the bonus levels! There are 18 of them, divided into four packs, starting with Adventurous, and they're all labeled with one of five difficulties. Next, there's the colorful pack, the one with the most levels, six instead of the usual four. And going in here, we've got the Atmospheric Pack, probably the easiest of the bunch, though I'm not really looking forward to Stonewall Corridor. And last but not least, the Overwhelming Pack. As you can imagine, these are the hardest levels in the game, but we'll worry about those later, because, oh, because next time we will... Ah, next time we will be dealing with the... Ah, oh, for the love of Builderman. All right. There we go. So the next thing in our radar is, of course, 
pack number one, the Adventurous Pack, just like the original playthrough. Now, one thing to get out of the way first. Will I be perfect running every level in each pack in one go? The answer? Absolutely not! I did everything in the main story levels because they are all confined to their own worlds. These levels are their own little worlds with their own sets of eight red coins. And unless you've played these yourself, you have no idea how hard some of these can get. If I did these in one go, this series would take fucking forever to finish. Are we cool? Okay, good. So next episode, coming later this year, we'll be starting with the bonus levels. Most of these I have quite fond memories of. Most of them. So until next time, stay tuned. Bane worth out.